she's a lady the sunflower queen of everything dancing all around our hearts I just don't know Mic on. All right. Okay. So here we are again, part two of uh, overpainting and stable diffusion. I'll just switch this off. I think that uh, the noise reduction uh, was working really well and getting rid of the sound of that fan. But just in case. Um, so uh, if you, hopefully you've seen the first video. The first video is um, it's a bit convoluted I suppose, but it's about half an hour, but it'll show you uh, things like where to find Stable Diffusion that I'm using, how to download it, um, install it, uh, just to get you started. And I actually, there's another video as well called Getting Started in Stable Diffusion on my channel. Go check that out. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good overview to just get you up and running. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you a few options for jumping in between Stable Diffusion to uh, Photoshop and After Effects to create motion graphics. That's kind of the plan. Um, <laughs> originally, it was just going to be about the overpainting, um, and maybe it will be, but yeah, I just want to mix it up a little bit. So let's jump straight into Photoshop. Just going to turn my music down here. Make sure Photoshop is actually up. There it is. Cool. Okay, so this is the image that we're working on. This um, this was originally an oil painting that I did, um, and since then I've dropped it into Stable Diffusion and processed it. Just gonna change this vlog music so I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> Actually, again. Same as last time, I'm just going to turn the vlog music right down so I don't have to worry about it. And take off my headphones so I can hear myself better. That's better. All right. For now, anyhow. Okay, so I'm going to jump into back to Photoshop. So what I, well, where I was at last time is I was about to show you how I kind of reworked this image or am reworking this image. I'm also going to show you how to mask different parts of this image so, so that it can be exported as layers and then brought into After Effects and then animated as a motion graphics uh, file. So the other file that I need to bring up as well is I need to bring up the source file for the background. So I'm going to bring that up. Okay, so this is the original background, so we're going to be working with that as well. We're going to take parts of that, and we're going to save it off as a separate, separated file, 
with these separated elements and then drop that into After Effects and then see what it creates from it. And then we're going to take that and import that as a layer into um, After Effects. So that's the plan. But uh, let's just start with doing a little bit of overpainting on this because that's essentially what this video is labeled. So I'm using a Huion pen display, um, which is set up here in front of me, but I also have a nice high definition monitor in front of me so I can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start just by refining some of my artwork quite a bit. Actually, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to separate her from the background. Um, because that's going to make it a lot easier to paint later on. So let's start by doing that. Zoom out, and we're going to paint a, her mask. So the first thing we're going to do is just paint uh, an alpha mask so we can separate her and create a separate layer with her that, that I can start to overpaint on. So in Photoshop, you see right at the bottom, there's a section here which is Quick Mask. So if you select the Quick Mask tool, now if I grab a pen tool, I can actually just change the size here. I can actually start to paint directly over the image and I'm painting the mask that it's going to create. So if I, and then when I deselect Quick Mask, very, because we're opposed to the pace these are set to 39%. So strokes matter. Set that to 100% and the tool type to hard. So this all matters. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's very different. So yeah, if I paint over now with my mask tool and then click out of my quick mask tool, you can see it's created a, the mask for me from an area that I've painted. So that's what we're going to do first, is we're going to paint her out using the Quick Mask tool. So if we just zoom out here. Like that. Make my brush a bit bigger. So I'm just going to quickly block out her main body. Now, while I'm doing this, if you haven't already, because the next one of the next steps, or, uh, after I've played around with this and separated her layer in Photoshop, is to take this into Stable Diffusion and create a new a new character or new generation of her with a blue background that we can chroma key out easily later. So, if you haven't already. <laughs> Go check out the link in the description of this video, download Stable Diffusion, install it, and then you can be up to speed with where we are now, where I am now, um, and then find a photograph or a painting or um, something like that that you have, and then you can follow through this process. Yeah, the other thing that you also are going to need, which I think I said before in the last video, is you are going to need a copy of Adobe Cloud, or at least Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects in order to follow, follow along with this. Eventually, I'm going to get to the point where I do my compositing, hopefully, in DaVinci Resolve, because I'm starting to do more and more of my VFX stuff. Sorry, more and more of my video editing stuff all of my video, video editing stuff in DaVinci Resolve rather than in these other old software packages. I'm just going to just, I'm just painting her out really quickly. <laughs> Oops. So, but I don't, so I don't care if I go over the edges a little bit at this stage. Just 
because I just want to get like her here. Any place where it's close to overlapping with the background, so any of these edges, any highlights. If I wanted to be really fussy, I would have a uh, feather on the on the brush when I was doing when I'm doing the edges, so it kind of creates a feathering. But uh, we're just going to hard chroma out, or hard sorry, hard hard matter out. By create, we're painting a mat, basically, a mat mask. A foot, and let's see how much of her have we got now. I think that's pretty much all of her. That's enough. More on the top of her head here. Okay, that's good. All right, cool. So we can jump out of the quick mask tool now. She is selected. She is ready to go. Um, I'm going to be aggressive with this picture since I, I'll just immediately save a copy. You can see I've, I've painted here a bit, but that's okay. I can correct that later. That doesn't matter. So if we go into uh, we're in our layers, let's unlock it. So it's an actual layer rather than the background image. And we're going to control C for copy or the other option if you can't remember to use control C for copying, just go up to edit, copy here. So hopefully that showed up in the live stream. Not sure about these sub menus. Okay, so she's selected, we've copied her but I'm also going to cut, just aggressively cut her out. So I'm going to go edit, cut. Ah, okay, control Z. All right, so this is what I did wrong. Once I've painted her mask in like that, then I have to go shift control I to select the inverse <laughs> of what I've just created. So I missed a step. So my apologies if you're following this around, following along with this, but yeah, um, select inverse, control, shift control I. If you can try and memorize these shortcuts, it's a real advantage if you want to be a professional Photoshop uh, oper computer operator, um, because time is of the essence. So yeah, inverse, shift control I, and I've already done it, but that's how you get to it. And now I'm going to edit, cut, and now I've just aggressively cut her out of the background. So next step, I'm going to go Control V, uh, which is the shortcut, or the other workaround. I don't know if you can see the sub menu is, and you go into the Edit drop down, Edit, Paste. So that's pasted her back in, but now she's a separate layer. You can see it here in the layer layers menu. So now she's a separate layer. And this layer. Is also what we're going to export later um, as an element for uh, Stable Diffusion to create a, an original generation from. In fact, because I know that you're probably itching to get into Stable Diffusion, so hopefully you've installed it now. <laughs> so if you, again, if you haven't, while we're getting through this next process, go and um, Go into the link on this video and download the Windows version of Stable Diffusion as a zip file, put it into your C drive root folder and you know extract it into your C drive root folder and then run it run the command prompt directly from that. Follow the instructions on the on the website. Um, okay, so this is a, another file. And then you'll be up to speed. So I'm going to just save this as another file because I like incremental saving. 
um, rather than destroying the original image, just in case I want to go backwards, especially if I'm just using something for a tutorial. So always remember to incrementally save and do it regularly if you can, <laughs> um, if you can afford the, the hard drive space. So we've got her now. We're going to drop her into this background, this full background later on, because this is more of a um, horizontal composition, which is better for After Effects. That's basically why. But let's get her back into Stable Diffusion, but without a background, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the first thing I can, or the next thing I can do is go into my Layers menu, click underneath her, into Layer 0, and then go up into this little sub-menu, create a new layer. So I've just created a new layer, and then I'm going to go and grab the Flood tool here, Paint Bucket tool, and make a color, a blue color, that stands in out, out enough from her that it's going to be easy to chroma key that out later in After Effects. So I've all, okay, that's all sussed, then I can just flood her out. So now there she is with a nice chroma keyed background. But you can see the edges are a bit funky. Um, but see this is the advantage of doing things this way. If I go click back onto her layer and then select my Eraser tool, and then change that to hard round, change the size so it's a bit smaller, that's a good size. Now I can just delete her from the background, and if I want to I can spend a lot more time refining that, that clear cutting, now that she's a separated element, which is the exact reason why we separate her in the first place, because we want control over her without worrying about messing up the background, and vice versa. So, you know, I can start to cut away some of these dodgy curls that I created, so that eat away with that brush. Get rid of as many, as much of the background as possible, just to prep it the best I can for jumping it back into Stable Diffusion. Not going to worry about these parts. Just these parts of her here. Like this. It's also a lot easier to see her from the background. Now it's a nice blue color. And I've, you know, always kind of try and choose foreground elements that are warm colors so it makes it easier to key out. All right. I think that's good. So, I know what you really want to see is Stable Diffusion, not Photoshop. So let's fire up Stable Diffusion. So again, if you've been following along with these steps, actually we still need to prep her as an image prompt. So I'm going to prep her now as an image prompt. So now that I've sort of done a rough tidy up, and she's a separate element. I'm going to incrementally, I'm just going to save, <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to save, uh, now I'm going to flatten the whole image, layer, flatten image, and then go file, save as, and then select a JPEG, and move that file name. And I'll save that, but as a maximum file just for now. So maximum compression, or lack of compression. L the largest file size, basically. 
So now I can go OK. Now she's a separate file, but she's not optimized, I don't think, for stable diffusion. So this version of stable diffusion likes a specific si size. So we'll go to image size, change the resolution to 72, which is the screen resolution, and change the height to 1024. And because I set up the same aspect ratio before, that's the right width. But if you haven't already, try and have, have a width, a canvas width of 768. Because that's going to come into play later on. So, go OK, cool. So you can see this file is a little bit more pixelated because it's a lower resolution file. But that doesn't matter because we're going to use it as a creative uh, what do you call like creative leaping point for our next generation of seeds? So now let's file save as save this JPEG as underscore image prompt just so I know that it's a small a smaller optimized file from this JPEG. Save. 32.7k, that's a good size, nice and small, even at maximum. Okay, now let's fire up Stable Diffusion. So again, <laughs> I'm saying it again, if you haven't already, install Stable Diffusion. <laughs> um, so you can run it now for this next step. So I've, I'm just firing it up for the first time now, I haven't actually had it running myself. Go into the step. All right, so this is the command prompt that's coming up now for Stable Diffusion, and it's uh, it's running the, the the command prompt on a local server that is running from that C drive folder. And once it's fired itself up, then it brings up a HTML page like this, and this is where we're going to go to start to leapfrog our image to the next step. All right, so here we're in Stable Diffusion. Uh, again, if you haven't checked it out and you, if this is your first time using Stable Diffusion, I'll try and go through everything kind of again and again and again. <laughs> um, but I kind of have to go through the steps anyhow. So before I even bring the file in, I'm just going to change my settings and optimize them for the file I'm going to generate. So I'm going to go into image size and width and change the width to 768, like the image prompt we created just before, and the height to 1024, just like the image size, uh, the image prompt we created. I'm going to change the number of inference steps to 35 because it's fast. It's a, it's a lower quality, but it's fast. And I'm going to change the guidance scale to about 10. Um, because I seem to get fairly good results from that. I'm going to change the number of images to make to, let's just say four to keep things fast for the purposes of this video, and generate in parallel. Because I'm using a large file size, I'm just going to do two. So those are our image settings. We're not going to select any of these additional render settings, upscale the image, fix incorrect eyes, and or live preview. They all take up too much time and RAM, um, we are going to have show only the corrected upscale image because that doesn't take up too much time and RAM. And the other thing to do is to check our system settings. So I noticed with that last video I was kind of blocking a little bit, so I'm just going to change, move me, <laughs> scale me a bit. Yeah, that's probably better. So you can see more of what's happening, and I'm going to minimize the command prompt, even though it's good to sort of watch it, see what's happening. Okay. Just um, excuse me, wrong layer. Let's 
blocked. That's why I can't move it. All right, there we go. Let's uh, make it a bit smaller so we can see our generated images better. All right, jump back into Double Fusion. Okay, I'm going to change the prompt to an appropriate name. So the original name for my character that I was working on uh, yeah, uh, was Goddess of Spring. It's Goddess of Spring. And with that last generation, if you watched the last video, if you haven't, it doesn't matter because we're going through it all over again. Um, I, I had some specific Im image modifiers set. So these are your image modifiers. They are underneath your image settings. So the very top is your text prompt. At the moment, moment we don't have an image se selected. In fact, we'll change that right now. We'll select our initial image, which is the one I was just working on in Photoshop. So because this is all about using images first and so incrementally working through the process of stable diffusion so you have more control over what you're creating so initial image choose file origins Bear with me. I'm having a um, having a moment. <laughs> Reads. Yes. Okay. So this is the image prompt we created before. We probably can't even see that one this window. This is the image prompt we we created before in Photoshop. Here, this little tile here. And that is going to be our initial jumping point for our next seeds. At the moment, we've got the seed set to random image. Where again going over these again so that you know you can follow along number of images to make four generate in parallel two that keeps it not so ram hungry that enables us to create bigger images if we don't set it this way if we have if we're trying to generate too many too many images at once or we have low vram it's gonna just it won't work it'll just throw up a red error um, otherwise if you have problems with your VRAM, set it all to 512 by 512 pixels, and you're going to have to work at a very low resolution, but at least you'll be able to do this stuff and follow along. So, and that includes your image prompt. Set your image prompt size to 512 pixels by 512 pixels. If you don't have enough VRAM to run it at 768 by 1024. I actually have a fairly fast video card and a high VRAM setting. Again, with the render settings, don't have uh, show a live preview because that takes too much time. Don't have fix incorrect fa faces and eyes, and don't have upscale image to four times. Not at this point. And I've got my inference steps set to 35, my guidance scale set to 10, my prompt strength set to 0.8. Sorry if I'm going over this stuff again and again. Um, but anyhow, go into visual style, and I had art nouveau selected so if i just click on that now it has added this here as a tile under image modifiers for this job window because that's your job window so now let's we can minimize that visual style section and go down to artist and expand that out now artist is where things have been getting controversial because we've got artists like if we scroll down here um, Greg Rut Rutkowski, who is not happy that people are using his style um, to create their images. Um, so out of respect to Greg, I, and because I, I don't need to use his style, I'm going to use different art styles. We haven't specifically said they don't want that. So I'm going to use ArtStation and ArtGerm, which are not Greg, Greg styles. <laughs> They're a different style. And those are my image modifiers. So I'm just that's what I'm going to leave at as my image modifiers. And now you can see that all three of those image modifiers are, are here now underneath our image prompt. We're not using the in painting. I haven't, I'll, I haven't even tried that myself. I'll get into that later, I'm sure. We're just going to create this series of of generations. 
We know that's all set. We've set our prompt. We've got our initial image. Now, since I added an image, another little um, section appears. You can actually see it, like the parent disappear. If I get rid of the image, the prompt strength disappears because that was underneath guidance scale. So then when I re-add the image, now prompt strength has appeared and by default it's set to 0.8, which is very strong and often has bad results. <laughs> so I mean, this is, this is something to bear in mind. This is kind of important. 0.8 prompt strength often deforms limbs. Um, it's very different from your original generation of image. It's, um, it's good if you want to brainstorm or if you really just want to throw things to the wind. But and if you want to really use your image modifiers and styles to complete, completely rework your image. But it can have some bad results. So I'm going to take that prompt strength right down to 0.1 for now, just so I can show you this next step. And now I'm going to select... Actually, we'll just we'll make it a little bit higher. We'll just make it 0.15. This 0.1 barely changes the image at all. Now, what I said in the last image, uh, last video, sorry, is um, valid here as well. Again, your prompt strength refers to how much the, the text prompt and the image modifiers affect your generation compared to your initial image. So it's set to 0.5, that's 15%, basically, 15% influence um, of these modifiers, these three modifiers that we selected from below, and this text. Those things, those four elements, these three modifiers and this one text prompt element, which could be multiple, like, elements and you know within the text prompt that I've just got goddess of spring which is like two goddess spring um that is 15% influence and the other 85% is the initial image so 85% influence of the initial image so 85% of it will be looking at like the initial image and then 15% of it will be influenced by these modifiers to create create an XC Okay, so it's, I'm, I know I'm probably over explaining, but that's how it goes. So now let's click make image. Now see, this is something that uh, they've added since I first did getting started in Stable Diffusion. This is great. Now they have this little job window up here with a stop button. And I realized in the last video I was obscuring that job window. That's another reason why I've just minimized myself. So yeah, above my head here, <laughs> in the above my webcam head up here, I guess it would be, is um, Goddess of Spring Art Nouveau Art Station by Art Germ. That is the text string for the code. So that that's is sent to a piece of a piece of software, a piece of AI called Code, I, I believe. And here we go. It's generated our first lot of images. And those are other our other options that we added. Guided scale, prompt strength, inference steps, sampler, um, which I didn't change, but you can change the sampler. Okay, so now we've got two, that's the first two generations of our new, what is gonna be our new layer in After Effects. Um, but you can see it's, it's barely changed from the original um, and it's going to generate another two for us, but it's, that's okay. So it's actually generating them now. So you can see it's just finished doing them. <laughs> so here's the, the last two. So there's four images now. One, two, three, four. For me to select from. Let's see if I zoom out here. And I'm just quickly looking through them. Basically, what I you know look at first and foremost is the hands and see how much if it's deformed the hands in the process it hasn't deformed it much we are going to select a 
we are going to select none of them <laughs> because what we're going to do instead is we're going to ride our prompt strength up so I can show you how it's going to distinctly change the style. So let's make it a higher prompt strength. Let's just generate two images rather than four so it speeds up this process. So I'm going to go into our prompt strength now and I'm going to change that to 0.35. So that's 35% influence of these modifiers and this text over the image. So 65% influence of the original image. Now we're going to go make image. And here is our next job window. And this is the old one. We didn't. We can get rid of those because we didn't select any of those. So as you can see here, there's a, a red remove button on this job this completed job. So if we're not going to use these as inputs, we're just going to remove them. Three minutes and 28 seconds to go. Coffee's getting cold. Hopefully by now you're running Stable Diffusion. Doesn't look like we've got any viewers, so maybe not. Twelve seconds to go, and oh, there we go. That looks quite cool, actually. That's a bit weird. You can see there's some distortion happening in her hands, but I quite like this one. Um, I didn't have face correction happening, so her eyes and her mouth are a bit funky, but we can always tweak that in Photoshop. So, in fact, we're going to do that now. Yeah, but that, yeah, that's a lot better. Actually, what I'll do is, we use this as an input now. So that would have changed this as the new input. Um, we're going to use this as the next point for another generation. But we're going to go and change our prompt strength back down to 0.15, so it's not changing it too much. But this time round, we're going to select Fix Incorrect Faces and Eyes. And we're only going to generate one image in parallel. Right, we're ready to go, just to keep things fast. We're not going to keep it to random image. It's definitely going to have to use this seed. See, this is the number of the seed, 72731.85, which is the same number in here, 72731.85. So we know it's all working with this. Hopefully it doesn't create fangs or something. It's, we've got some weird stuff happening with her lips here. And now, make image. And the other great thing they have now is you can stop a queue and you can add to your queue, which there wasn't an option before. seconds to go. Okay, well that's, that's, I don't like that too much. Um, let's, uh, I need to give myself some options. But it has fixed her face and it didn't make it too bad. So let's change, let's generate four images, no, two at a time, four, four images. So I've got a few more options with the same seed setting and the same prompt strength, but fix incorrect faces and eyes selected. Because I just want to get rid of this weird distortion that's happening with her leg, where it's 
It's taking my painting style and turning it into wrinkled cloth. I think the dog needs to go out. Usually if he starts panting at me like that, he uh, needs to go to the toilet. So I might have to have a quick break and toilet the dog. It says here, 28 seconds. Here we go. All right, that's better. Look at that. That's so much better. And the hands look not too bad. I think I'm going to use this as my um, final layer for After Effects. That's not bad at all. So yeah, let's finish that. Don't actually need to wait for the um, next two generations. Well, we'll see. Maybe maybe this next lot will be even better than that one. So I've got dogs next to my feet. Okay, that's not bad as well. So we've got options. Th oh, that's better. All right, that's good. I like her eyes are way better there. Her lips are good. I'm going to use that as our input. Uh, we're going to deselect, fix, incorrect eyes and faces because this version, all of that's corrected. Okay, using that there as the input. Our next, our our, our seed now is seven two seven three one eight five. Again, it's in here seven two seven three one eight five, and it's here. As a little tile. We're going to keep these up, not that they really matter anymore. Uh, drop our plot strength down to 0.1. We're going to do the same generate for in parallel just so I've got options just in case it messes with the image too much. And this time round, instead of fix incorrect faces and eyes because we know it doesn't have to fix those, we're going to have upscale the image to four times the resolution going to select that. That way her final height will be 4k which is what I want for ultra high definition video. That's the reason why I want it 4k. And we're going to change the, let's, we'll just actually, we'll just generate two in parallel and we're going to change the number of inference steps this time. I'm going to go right up to 200 because my reasoning now is I'm happy with this this input, I'm happy with this in every single way, I just want it bigger and high resolution and changing the inference steps usually changes the, improves the quality usually. So let's go make image, now this is going to take a lot longer because I'm generating two, two very large images so, so, but you can see that it, here it is in the new job. Inference steps 200, guided steps 10, prompt strength 0.1, upscale using the real S scan, S scan times 4 plus. So it's upscaling the image to four times the size. It's going to take six minutes. So actually, it's only going to take one minute. But I'm just going to take the opportunity while it's generating that image. Just to open my shed door and let the dog out so it can use the toilet. Second, let's be quiet now. I've got the shed door open. Twenty one seconds. Four seconds. And come on. Okay, 
hear that I can hear the hard drive going for it. Yeah, it's still here. Do I need to close that door again? Oh, it just did it. Okay. Right. It, okay, I'm going to actually select fix incorrect faces and eyes because it did mess up the eyes. It's kind of messed up the hands a bit as well. Isn't that weird? And maybe I'm just going to change the number of inference steps to 100 because I think maybe that's gone too far. <laughs> okay, try that again. So that's going to take. So now it's 100 inference steps. It's using that same generation as before this image as an initial prompt but I'm just trying to upscale it and I wasn't happy with the results with this face this one completely no good time remaining 30 seconds oh that's pretty good at least it's working faster than I thought it was gonna Four seconds. Oh, it's freezing on me. I'm listening for that hard drive. I think it's actually the fans of the GPU. All right. Okay. Well, that's that's no good at all. This one is she's a little bit cross-eyed. Ugh. All right. Well, we might as well get it right. So we'll change the number of images to make to four this time. So I've got more to choose from because at the moment. It's not giving me what I want with the first two generations. Okay, that's going to take twice as long, but it only took 26 seconds aside from that freezing point. So it should only take about a minute, hopefully. Generate image. It's not going to take six, six minutes. Yeah, one minute, 25 seconds. Well, that's a bit longer. It's kind of sucky. certainly got options now. <laughs> I suppose I could just keep her low resolution and upscale her in Photoshop. There's a photo a photo reconstruction um, filter in Photoshop now. I can use that on her face. So that's always an option. 32 seconds to go. At least with this first batch. And how long have I been streaming for? Almost an hour. I have to get back to work. This is this is not my day job. <laughs> so 
um, I'm going to put a pin in this soon and uh, we'll do a part three where we do the same sort of thing but with the background that I showed you before just for now we're concentrating on creating our foreground characters so is that the first to jump yep so this is the first two generations and you can see that's pretty much created the same problems as the last two gens because it's actually almost creating it's creating identical seeds see here seven two three one eight seven is identical to this seven two seven three one eight seven that's because the random image is not set so if i select that then it's going to create different seeds from those but it doesn't matter because hopefully in this next two we get something that we can use four seconds and we'll find out It's doing that laggy thing again. There we go. All right. Um, well, the face is good for that one. A bit funky that one that one's a bit cross-eyed and that one's all weird and mottled so probably i'm going to go with this one um or what i could possibly do if i'm happy with just about everything on this one except for her face i could actually do a face swap <laughs> but again we can just quickly do some things in photoshop but those those are our that's our final image for now. Um, except uh, she does have a funky hand here. Well, actually, both the hands are a bit funky, but that that doesn't matter. Not for the purposes of this. Um, yeah. All right. Let's go into Photoshop now. So this is again, if you can, if you remember. You're not in Photoshop. I'm in Photoshop. That is where we where we started from, which is not very many generations from the original oil painting. This is the original oil painting. So this is this is where I initially started from. I took a photo, used that reference photo, and I painted this oil painting on this background. And in that last in our last lesson. Um, I went over how I kind of generated seeds from that and then I overpainted those seeds to create this and in this lesson we basically separated her from the background and created a new generation of her and now if you bring that in hopefully we can find it it should be in output the second to last one let's take another look this is the one so you can see where we got to that this is where she's now so that's the image prompt that we had and that's what we have now which is a quite a bit different from before it's pretty I can't show them side by side okay so let's just correct a few things just really quickly before i put a pin in this i've probably got like five minutes before i hit my hour window and then i really just need to get back to 
back to work because I've, I've got a couple of jobs I need to finish tonight. Or I'm trying to finish tonight. I don't know if I will manage because I've been struggling a little bit with my chronic pain fatigue. Don't mind. Not in there to hear about me. So I just want to fix this part of her hand here. So I'm going to use the smudge tool. It's uh, pretty small already. So just make it a little bit bigger. And just going to bring her knuckle out a bit here. Same with the, the tip of her finger. Again, I'm just using the smudge tool and my nice pen thing, pen tool. Um, as you can see, the smudge tool softens the line as well. So what I could do as well is grab the pen tool and select this color. So that's the color of the line, this line. Make sure our pen tool is set to a hard stroke and our size is small. And let's see, let's try 0.3 and now I'll just make sure that my post my pace is about 80%, 85 percent. So it's not giving me a completely hard line. And I'm just going to rebuild this line here. And we'll do the same thing with my blooper finger here. So, um, obviously, you know, her fingers aren't quite right still here. So, maybe I use the smudge tool again and uh, just move this line over a little bit. So, it's starting to look a little bit more natural. And again, I can use the smudge tool like a paintbrush almost. And it's, it's almost like working with a, a wet medium. And I'm just painting the lights and darks, moving them around with the smudge tool to create some more natural looks to her hands, since hands seems to be the biggest problem with uh, stable diffusion with AI to get right. So I'm just tidied up her hand. Again, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to fuss around too much with it, but that's better than it was before at least. And if we go up to this other hand here, We'll do a little bit of a tidy up with that hand as well. Again, all we're using is the one smudge tool, which is standard in Photoshop and Creative Cloud. Just about every version of Photoshop. I think uh, for, for the last few years, half a decade probably, has the smudge tool. It's uh, not unusual. Though I did notice in the beta version it was hard to find. Which is not good. Because otherwise I probably would be doing all of this um, using Photoshop Beta. So I actually have the photo reference up here from the original photo that I created that painting from. So I can just refer to where her fingers actually were on the day and rebuild it a little bit. <laughs> um, She's completely lost a finger here. So I can I can even use the smudge tool and try and sort of recreate a finger. Up to here. I'm literally painting with the smudge tool. So this is a very useful tool. And push these lighter colours up to make like a knuckle. Kind of look. And
and do the same thing, push the lights and darks around on the back of her hand, create these kind of vein looks. And um, again, once I've got this far, I'm going to zoom in a bit, quite a bit, and just grab the brush tool because it's softened all of these dark lines, and go over with the brush tool and just darken up these these lines a bit. So we get I'm not gonna fuss around too much. So we get a vastly improved hand from what Stable Diffusion had created for us. Um, the original line of her neck is down to here. So and actually her dress came to there so on the original painting so again I can use this this tool or I can use it to soften those kind of bits but inst maybe instead of using that I can use like the clone brush tool so this is the clone brush tool here and it's uh, way too big at the moment so I've set it to a smaller size let's get size and because we want to paint into this area here think we use this magic wand tool first I can select just the area that we want to paint into so I've got the magic wand then I've got control no shift so I can add to the selection and I'm just clicking in this area here so I, I select into here because this is the area we want to change but I don't want to paint over a skin or over a hand then go back into the clone tool that we had before now with the clone tool, at the moment that's our size, but we haven't defined which area it's cloning from. So I'm going to clone part of this dress in here and bring it into here. In order to define the area that we're using for it to sample from, I select the Alt key, which will bring up this kind of icon, and then select the area. So now it's selecting from this area. So you can see, it brings up a little preview, which is actually from that area. And we're going to clone that in here. So I'm just going to clone it in like that. And I can select different parts of her dress if I want a different type of texture. And then if I deselect my little selection, I've kind of recreated a dress a little bit here. So that, that's all looking a lot better. The other thing I can do is I can do a little bit of plastic surgery with the same smudge tool if I want to. Um, her nose is looking all good. Um, I'd have to say that this is an, a, a very natural kind of shape to her face. So I can use the smudge tool again if I want to and just bring in more natural shape. Um, not doing a very good job there. All right, maybe yeah, just that's enough. And then grab my pen tool, select a darker part, darker color, or black. Maybe I'll just use black. And I'm just going to paint in this dark shadow here. Like that. So now, if we zoom out a little bit, she's got a little bit more of a natural kind of shape to her cheekbone here, rather than just being completely smooth like a doll. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's our first element. Let's get zoom out. That's our first element. That's going to be our top layer in After Effects. And now I'm going to put a pin in this because I've got work to do. <laughs> and I'm going to do a part three later on. So um, hopefully that was informative for you. Um, it's given you a, another basic insight into Stable Diffusion. I'm going to, now I'm going to save this off as well. Always remember to save incrementally. So now we've got all that 
go to file and I'm going to save off another copy of it into my reworking folder so I can find it. Transplant in a Photoshop file. I'm going to use the same file name, but I'm going to say rework. So it's got a different file name so I can find it easily later on. So yeah, there she is, all blue screened, separated from the landscape background. And in the next video, I'm going to use this original painting take her out of the painting so that I can drop in our new character, our new seed into the painting instead. So yeah, in After Effects. Cool. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that made all, uh, all made sense. Just uh, tune back soon for the rest of it. That's all for me, for now. Later. Between dreams and reality I can't say Sunflower Queen